So today I want to talk about enhancing brain function and sort of any and anything and everything possible to do so using microcurrent therapy. So first off, um, you should know that not everything seems to work for everyone. This is very, really typical with brain stuff. And when we're dealing with debilitating conditions such as Alzheimer's and dementia, it's more of a challenge to touch them without longer stimulation using more expensive tools uh, such as the VHE, uh, which will allow for kind of a longer stimulation deeper in the brain. And I'll, I'll talk about all this in a moment. Before we get into any treatments, it's important to discuss um, different brain waves and how they work. So we often talk about beta brain waves as being bad, but that's not always true. Chronic, just like acute pain isn't always bad. I mean, it, it hurts, but it's not really a negative thing. Beta, it, like chronic beta is the bad part. Like temporary beta is not so bad. So, so um, if you are listening to this video right now, chances are that unless you're using your ear clips and putting yourself in a different mode, you are in the everyday waking state of beta. So your brain is processing data as we talk. So while in this state, you might feel the pressure of the chair you're sitting in, uh, music in the background, uh, children playing, the brain is processing everything. And it does this in beta. Now beta, there's a lot of different definitions of what's a low and a high beta, but functionally anything between 16 and 30 Hertz would be considered to be a beta brainwave function. So that is your typical day-to-day -day brainwave if you are not in chronic beta, you're gonna be okay. If you're in chronic beta, you need to think about changing it. So next we'll go on to alpha. Now you guys have probably heard me rant and rave about how awesome alpha is. Uh, this is my favorite state. This is the state with reduced sensory data and less information entering your system. So when you are in alpha, you're typically in a calm and relaxed space, a calm and relaxed environment. You're not even really hearing the background noise of the guy ripping up the carpet and and hammering in the floorboards. The, you're in an alpha state, you're relaxed. And naturally this will enable you to relax and calm down. Now when the brain is relaxing, it has more time and energy to dedicate to healing and less time dedicated to processing. And, and that makes sense when you think about it that way, right? My brain is not sitting there when I'm relaxing processing a book I'm reading or watching TV or being stimulated by my son running around the room or my cats going crazy. It is just calm. And you might even find that you kind of zone out a little bit when you're in an alpha state. So when you're not focused on processing things, you can your brain can dedicate its time to other things. Ooh, it's got quiet all of a sudden. So alpha operates between seven and 12 Hertz. Next is theta. Now, we don't really talk about theta that much, but maybe we should. Theta waves emerge during a time when we are half awake and half asleep. So that kind of moment where you wake up and you're kind of drifting in and out of sleep, that's your theta brain state. In adults, that's like the only time that we get it, aside from supposedly those times when we kind of, you know, lose track of time in the shower, right? The rhythm puts us into a theta state and we just kind of zone out and we're almost meditating. So uh, now in children, this is interesting, in children between the ages of, I think it's two and six or two and five, they live in theta more often than not. This state is where our brain is most programmable, which is why we say that children in those ages, it's very formative years, right? So from a therapy standpoint, what could we do with theta? We'll, we'll get into that shortly. But theta operates between four and eight hertz. So in your seven to 12 hertz alpha range, you're getting a little tiny bit of theta in there. So next we have delta. So delta waves are important. We mostly only access them in our deep healing sleep, which means that people who are not sleeping well will suffer with a lack of delta wave programming. Now, supplementing this with microcurrent can be beneficial to healing, and delta operates at 0.5 to 4 hertz. Gamma. Gamma waves are known as the state of higher consciousness, most often achieved in meditation and deep sleep. 
gamma is actually what's going to allow your brain to detox itself. And this becomes critical when we consider mental health conditions connected to toxified brain cells that need to be cleansed. Gamma operates between 32 and 45 hertz. Okay, so that's a breakdown of the different brain frequencies, but how do we use them? Typically, we have no control over our brain or what it does, but with microcurrent, we do, and, and which is what we're gonna talk about right here. There are three kind of top tools. Number one is the ear clips. These are the easiest method, but they don't work for all applications. You can use these with alpha to curb anxiety, beta to enhance concentration, delta for deep sleep, and possibly theta if you were to use like a second device to do things like tongue stimulation where you're reprogramming the brain because theta makes you susceptible to being reprogrammed. Uh, number two would be the trigeminal nerve pads. These are the sticky pads that go above your eyebrows. They work very well for gamma applications, depression and PTSD, the occasional alpha stimulation. However, I have found that for dementia and Alzheimer's, the trigeminal pads don't get anywhere near as well results, anywhere near as effective results as the VHE. And the VHE allows us to beam the frequencies of uh, the specific device in a PEMF form deep into the brain, and that stimulates the pineal gland. So if you go right here, it will actually pass through 12 inches. So it's gonna get through the back of your skull. So you're actually able to, to treat deep into the brain, whereas with the trigeminal pads, it's more, you, you're relying on the nerves to access the brain, um, which is not as direct. So for use with gamma, this can help with Alzheimer's, dementia, depression, PTSD, and more. And we call this combination the Gamma Energizer Protocol. So that's what you'll see uh, in the books when you're looking at this protocol. So we talked about different brain states. We talked about different tools and different treatments. Most of these treatments are listed in your books. So you'll be able to actually look at them, get some diagrams, and go in and learn them. Uh, however, none of them are really hard to do. They're all incredibly easy, simple treatments. A lot of neurofeedback involves passive therapy. So as long as you know what kind of frequency you're trying to use, what type of brainwave state, then you have the answer and the tools that you need. Okay, so that is a brief breakdown of the different brainwave patterns and how we can use them with microcurrent. So I hope you all found it very helpful. If you have any questions about any of this at all, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be absolutely happy to help. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you next week for another Monday training. Take care, everyone.